Welcome along to the fifth installment in our video series where we are learning how to make a maze game in Scratch. Now what I want to do in this video tutorial is simply add an enemy to our game. So I'll give you an example of what it's going to look like. You can see here in level one, I don't have any enemies. Okay, It's good practice when you're doing game design to start your game very simple. Just let the user get the hang of the controls and get a feel for the game. So that's what happens in level one. When I go to level two, however, You'll see we've got this griffin, which is like a lion, cross eagle or something like that. Just some make-believe animal flying around. And he's just preventing me from getting through this path here. Okay, if I don't time my run perfectly and hit him, I get sent back to my start position. Okay, so you've got to actually time your run to get past that griffin and get through to the portal. And if I can get through here without stuffing up, you'll see that I've got him in level 3 as well. Alright, so let's have a crack at adding an enemy into our game. You'll need to open up the project from where you left off last lesson. And the first thing you'll need to do is bring in the Griffin Sprite. So to do that, head down to your sprite list, load up the Griffin Sprites, just by going for a search here, type in Griffin. There he is. You can see he is animated, so we do have the potential to make him look like he's flying here. Just go to your costumes, have a look at the costumes in the Griffin. So you've got the 1 and 2 there, the A and B ones, which make him look like he's flying. The C and D ones, so the 3rd and 4th costumes, not what we need, so delete them. We just want those first two costumes that make it look like he's flying. And the first bit of code we'll put in, I guess, is um, the code to make him fly. So go to your events on the Griffin, bring out when the green flag is clicked. And bring in a forever loop because we always want this animation to occur while our game's running. And choose next costume. And if you give that a run, he's probably going to have a bit of a heart attack there. He's flying very quick. So you might need to go to control and just wait 0.1 seconds before switching costumes. And that, I know, still doesn't look fantastic, but it is scratch. Our graphics aren't overly great in the first place, but we've got our Griffin now animated to make it look like he's flying. Okay, the other thing you're probably um, noticing is way too big to fit in our game, so drop his size down to, I'm going to guess, 20% for my game. Pretty small, but that's probably big enough to fit through the gaps. Similar size to the player, and that's what I'm looking for. So that's not a bad size for the Griffin there at 20%. Okay, now as I said before, in level 1 we don't want an enemy. We want to state our game simple for the user, so they shouldn't have to worry about... Um, avoiding an enemy in level one. So when our game starts, under looks, just choose the hide block of code and whack it in straight away. So when the green flag is clicked, we hide our griffin, like so. And we want him to reappear in level two. Okay, so the way we do that is we need to um, pick up a message over here in our control, oh, sorry, in our events. It's not when I receive game over, it's when I receive new level. So when I get that message broadcast to me that we are switching levels, then we tell the computer it's time to show the Griffin because we are going on to level two where things are going to get a little bit harder. So we need to use an if statement for this because we need to tell it where it needs to go exactly, whether it's in level two or level three. So each level is going to have different coordinates. So in level two, we need to go to our operators here and just say if our variable level is equal to 2. The first thing we want to do is we want to show the Griffin, because remember we hit him to start with in level 1, but when we get to level 2, we'll show him. And then we need to work out where we want to position him. So I'll just go to level 2 here in my game. Well, I want to position him through here. It's moving backwards and forwards between these two green walls. So I'm going to have to click on my Griffin here and hit the little eyeball to show him so I can see where he is for a minute. And I reckon a starting position somewhere around there looks good. So those coordinates are minus 49 and minus 76. So I'm just going to need to write them in here because they haven't updated. So minus 49 and minus 76. That's on level 2. We need to do another if statement, so just duplicate all of that and stick it below, and it's going to be for level 3 this time. So just move your um, Pico over to the portal and switch to level 3. We don't want him down here in level 3, obviously. I want him up in this gap here, moving backwards and forwards, trying to prevent you from getting to the finish line. 
So I'm going to start him in this position. So his X and Y coordinates now are 1 and 48. Okay, so in level 2 he goes there. In level 3 he goes there. And all I need to do is attach that to new level. We don't need a forever loop around this. Okay, as soon as we get that message, it runs that code once and that's it. We don't need it repeating throughout the game. So let's stop our game and start it. Okay, and we'll see what happens. I've noticed that my portal is starting in the wrong position there, so I'm going to just press the green flag again, and that should push it back down to the right position. Let's have a look at that later on. Um, so if we move our Pico over to the portal and hit that portal, in level 2 we've got our Griffin in the right starting position. In level 3, he's in the right starting position as well. Okay, so they're looking good. The next thing we need to do is get him moving. So they're in the right positions, but what I want to do is get them moving. So we want to move to the right first of all. And when they hit the wall, we want to swing around and go back the other way. So they're just bouncing between the walls there on level 2. And same with those green walls in, oh sorry, green walls in level 2, pink walls in level 3. Okay, so let's get started by going back to the griffin here. And it's just going to be a matter of when the green flag is clicked again. Bring that stripped out. First thing I want it to do is face the right way. So I want him moving to the right first of all. So there is a block of code that does that in motion. It is called point in direction. There it is. And you can click on this 90 degrees. It's already pointing to the right for us, so we'll leave it at 90 degrees. But if you want him facing a different direction, say left or whatever, you can adjust it there. But we want our griffin facing 90 degrees, which is to the right. We always want him starting facing to the right. And the next thing we want to do is move him. So under control, we're going to bring in a forever loop. And in motion, we're going to move him. Not at speed 10, because that's way too fast. I found speed 4 or 5 probably the best for this griffin. Okay, so if we just press run now, watch our griffin here move to the right. Oops, we might have to go to that level first. Again, my portal on level 1 has gone to a random location. I'm just going to have to fix that in a minute. Okay, there's our griffin flying across the page. So he's flying well, but he doesn't hit the green wall and turn around and come back again. So that's the next step for me to do. So over on the griffin, we're going to drag out yet another when the green flag is clicked block. And it's going to be an if statement. If we're touching the green wall, then just swing around, do a U-turn, and go the other way. So under sensing, we've got an option here for touching color. So if our griffin is touching a particular color, turn him around to go the other way. So this color box here we can click on. And instead of trying to guess this green color again, we just go down and grab the eyedropper tool, hover over the green walls in our game and click on them and it will select that green colour for our walls. So it says if the griffin is touching that green colour in motion, we're just going to turn, doesn't matter which of those turns you use, but I'm just going to use the first one. We're going to turn clockwise at 180 degrees, so that should flip him around and go the other way. Now I need to wrap that up inside a forever loop so that the computer is always waiting for our griffin to touch the green wall. It's always listening out. When it does, it should just flip it around um, 180 degrees. Let's have a look. Perfect. Flipped him around, and he's going the opposite direction. The only issue is he goes upside down when he's going to the left. But that's quite an easy fix. All you need to do is find this block of code in your griffin. And in motion, we can set the rotation style left to right and put that in underneath there, points in direction 90, and then we've got set rotation left to right. So now when the um, griffin does a rotate, let's have a look here, he stays up the same way. Okay, so that's working well for level 2. When we get to level 3, he'll still fly through the walls. You can see here, it's because we haven't coded him up um, for what happens when he hits the pink wall. So we're actually going to need to pull this block of code out and duplicate it and we're going to click on this green one here and hit the eyedropper and go and select the pink wall from our game and we're going to put in an operator that says or into this gap here so if we're touching the green wall or we're touching the pink wall then we're just going to turn around 180 degrees so quickly test that again with my dodgy old portal on level one, which I will fix. 
He's working fine there on level two, level three. He's now working fine, switching between those two walls. Just great. Okay, next thing we want to do with the griffin is what happens when we actually hit him. So I'm going to have to do a few things here. First of all, on the griffin. When Pico hits the griffin, I want to play a sound to show that the user has done something wrong. So when the green flag is clicked on the griffin yet again, we've got a fair bit of code on this griffin. When the green flag is clicked, I want the computer to listen out for when Pico and the griffin touch each other. So if the griffin is touching Pico, then we're going to play a sound. So go to your sounds tab. We don't want the magic spell. We actually want to bring in the sound called wobble. There's not many good sounds in Scratch for this sort of thing. But this one will do us. And in the sound tab, we're just going to start the sound wobble. Wrap that up in a forever loop so the computer is always listening out for when Pico and the Griffin are touching. When they are, we'll play the sound wobble. Now, that's not the only thing that I want to happen. I want to play that sound wobble, but I also want Pico to go back to his starting position for that particular level. So in level three, he'll go back to this spot. In level two, I think he was starting down in the bottom left-hand corner. So we actually need to code that up over on Pico. And again, we've got a lot of code here already, so you're going to have to make a bit of room off to the side and add in some um, new code here. So when the green flag is clicked, will be the first thing you add in. Let me just zoom in a bit here so we can see that a bit clearer. So when the green flag is clicked, we just need to ask the if then statement again. If we're in level two and we're touching the griffin, we want to go to these coordinates. If we're in level three and touching the griffin, then we want to go to these coordinates. Okay, so it's a simple if then statement. We just need to use the and operator in that gap today. So if we're on level two, so we need to bring out level say equal to two okay that goes in the first little slot so if we are on level two and we're touching the griffin Oops, not the portal griffin so if we're on level two and we're touching the griffin we need to go back to the start position for level two now i think we can find that in our code just here i'll just duplicate that little snippet of code cheat a bit here they're the coordinates we need to go to for level two if we are touching the griffin. Duplicate all of that. And we're going to do the same again for level three. So if level equals three and we're touching the griffin, we need to go to the coordinates for level three start position. So we can find them over here. There's mine just there. So we'll just duplicate that, move it over. We don't need that broadcasting a message bit, but that looks good. We just need to wrap this up now inside of a forever loop so the computer is always listening out for when we are touching that griffin. Okay, that looks pretty good. Give that a test run. Uh, we'll make sure it's working. So don't worry about this portal. I'll fix it in a sec, as I said. Okay, let's try and hit the griffin here now in level two, and hopefully we go back to that start position. We do. And you would have heard that wobble sound as well when we hit him. Let's try it on level three to make sure he goes back to this start position. Perfect. Okay, so we've got that working nicely. I just want to go back and fix this portal up. See, if I start on level one, you can see it starts up here, which is not what I want. So what I can do, just as a quick workaround, on my portal, just in this starting block here, just wait 0 0.01 seconds, so real split second, before it actually shows. And now when you start your game, it should start in the right position. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. We've got our Griffin working. One last thing I might add into our game is some background music. It's a little bit boring without a bit of background music in there. So on my controller sprite, let's add in a little bit of music. Now we'll have to go to sounds for this. We don't need that pop sound, just scrap it. We're gonna search for a sound. Now, there's lots of loops here that you can use. I don't think they loop that well. Okay, but the one I'm looking for is a dubstep loop. This one here. Okay, kind of sounds futuristic. Um, now, if we were to play that on a loop, it sounds a bit dodgy. Let me code it up and I'll show you what I mean. So if I go to events and 
bring out when the green flag is clicked. Remember we're on the controller sprite here. I'm just going to put in a forever loop and in sounds we're going to play sound dubstep till done. Have a listen to it. Sounds good now. Doesn't really flow that well. Okay, so if you want, you could go into your sounds and edit them a little bit. Okay, you might want to just get rid of that start bit. It's really loud. Um, maybe just this little end bit here that fades away. And by deleting those fades, it might just transition a little bit better. And if you make it softer, should only be really soft anyway, the background music. We want to be able to hear all the sound effects throughout our game. So if we've got a nice soft background sound, it's just there filling in the blank space, the empty white noise. Okay, so a little bit louder probably wouldn't hurt. That'll probably go well. Okay, so the last thing we've got to do now is basically test the game out. Make sure it's working. I'm pretty sure we've covered everything. Um, zoom out a bit here and just check all your code. And all those are good. Griffin. Actually, one last thing I might do with the Griffin, I forgot to add it in, is what happens when the game is over? We actually want to hide that Griffin. So go to hide. And that's about it. All right, so let's give that a test run. We need to test everything in our game. Okay, we want to be able to collect everything. We want to test the portals, make sure the walls, um, that we bounce off them and go back to the start position. We want to make sure the griffin works everywhere. Okay, so if you want, you can fast forward through this. I'm going to um, speed it up anyway, but I'm going to be testing out my game to make sure everything works. All right, so the only issue I've found is this gap up here is a bit of an issue. So I'm going to go to my costumes, oops, sorry, my backdrops. I'm going to need to lower this line down a bit so that our little player can fit in there. I'm also going to make Pico a little bit smaller at size 25% rather than 30%. And that way, when I run that level, you'll be able to, let's just test this bit again. You'll be able to fit in this gap nicely and hide from the griffin. Still sneak up there to finish off the game. Okay, so that is it. I believe we have a working maze game. You've learned a fair bit in this one. You learn how to add collectibles to your game. You've got background music. You've made walls that you shouldn't be able to touch. You've added an enemy, a portal where you change levels. There's a fair bit going on. So if you've got this far and you've got it all working, you've done really well. See if you can add some extra things to it um, to make it a little bit more complex. You can add more levels, more enemies, uh, more things to collect, and so on. Okay, all the best with finishing off your maze game.